Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you for joining me for a quick video today. Before we start, please like and subscribe to my channel so you can see more content that comes out. St. Augustine grass is uh, very popular in warmer climates uh, like Texas, where I'm at, and Florida. It doesn't do very well in colder climates. Um, it is a more sensitive grass, but it is very pretty. Uh, people kind of refer to it as carpet grass because it grows so thickly um, and the leaves are a lot broader. So it can definitely be one of the most, uh, one of the prettiest grasses that you can grow in your lawn uh, versus other ones. And also because it grows so tightly, it actually helps naturally uh, prevent weeds from going into your grass, which can keep it looking very nice as well. So since this is an, a very uh, popular grass, I wanted to talk about some of the things you can do to make sure it grows really well, um, some of the diseases and issues that it has, and really just overall how to maintain it. So right here is a perfect example of the main issue um, or disease that St. Augustine grass gets and where people have a problem with it. This here is where your grass turns kind of a lime green color. And you can see here, we have some of the darker green all around it. And then we have lime green, mainly in this bunch over here. And there's more over there where some of it actually die before I was able to fully treat it. And then you have some other lime green spots just randomly. Now, a few weeks ago, I think about three, I actually had lime green over this entire spot all the way over there and then over where you can't see currently right now. And as you saw from the previous shot, almost all of that is gone now and we have our nice dark green grass back. Now for issues on how to prevent and also how this lime green grass comes is two different things. Uh, first, it could have some type of a root rot um, or root damage from grubs, um, but really the main thing that I've seen here is a lack of iron. Um, also, sometimes this grass doesn't really like synthetic fertilizers. So what you can do, and what I did here, was take uh, go buy regular compost, uh, I use cow manure, and just sprinkle it as a fertilizer instead of using something like miracle Grow, um, something synthetic like that. Um, this also really shows us a iron deficiency. So you can get a fertilizer, preferably organic, that is high in iron, and put that out, and that should also help a lot. Now we have to talk about watering. Now one of the biggest issues or mistakes you can make with watering St. Augustine grass is watering it every day. Now, I know that sounds strange, but you really need to make sure that you soak, you get the roots really soaked in water really deep down. Now, you might think, okay, then I definitely need to water every day, but you really want to water St. Augustine grass only once a week. But what you want to actually do is water it really good your first time when doing this, water it really good. Um, I would probably start with 20 minutes um, on your entire lawn where there's St. Augustine grass. And then you're going to wait. You're going to wait to see how many days it takes the grass to start basically going a little bit limp, where the dark, um, broad leaves of the St. Augustine grass start to shrivel and go down a little bit limp. That is a point where you want to water again. You do not want to water again if the grass still looks nice and healthy. Now, this will prevent overwatering, which is very important to prevent the, um, a lot of diseases that St. Augustine grass can get. But since you only want to water once a week, if you watered and then four days later, your grass is already starting to go limp and shriveling up, that means you didn't water long enough. So if you only water for 20 minutes, now next time when you go water the next day, you water for 30 minutes all the way. And you do that until you find the perfect amount of watering time to ensure that you can go an entire week. Now, of course, when it rains, that will throw things off into a little bit of a tizzy. It changes a little bit in the spring versus the fall, the summer, where it's really hot and that water gets dried up. So it's kind of a constant ever changing. But if you know, for example, I usually water my grass on Friday mornings. If you know that it's Thursday and you go outside and you see the grass is not ready yet, then go turn your your sprinkler system off until it's ready and then go turn it back on. It's maybe not going to be exactly a week every time. If it rains really well, then maybe you're not going to need it for a few days. So let's actually get a little, a little bit closer. I'm going to show you what the good healthy grass that is not immediately watered looks like and then I'm going to show you what some of the grass looks like that needs to be watered. Okay, so this is good healthy dark green broad-leaved St. Augustine grass. You see it's a lot thicker almost really, I would say probably double the size um, of normal grass, which again is why it's so popular. It really is very pretty. Um, it can honestly, if done correctly, can almost look fake it's so good. Um, but this is the way you want it to look. Again, I watered last night, and so everything is looking really, really well right now. 
Now let's go look at some of the grass that does not look as good that needs to be watered so you can see what it looks like when you need to water again. So this is at the corner right here where next to the sidewalk and next to some of the Bermuda grass I have not changed out yet. And this is an area right here that my sprinkler system does not get to. It's just a little small square. And you can immediately tell the difference. You have the grass over here, which stands tall. It looks nice. It's nice and full. And then you have the grass here that it completely limps over. You see it's just completely all the way limped. And now look at the difference. It looks skinnier because when it um, is lacking for water, it actually curls up on itself. So you see an example here of the main St. Augustine grass here that is watered. It is nice and full and spread out, and so it looks larger. And on this one, it actually completely curls in and folds in on itself. And so it makes it look smaller. But if you look, it's just that it folds in. It's trying to protect itself to hold in that water as a defense mechanism because it, has, it knows it needs water. So it folds in its leaves to try to, uh, to try to hold the moisture that it has since it knows it doesn't have much left. Just like that. So you see it's, it folds down, it lays down on the ground, and then it folds in its leaves. So that's how we know this grass needs to be watered more. So the last step in how to care for your St. Augustine grass is mowing the yard. Now, I know most people just mow the yard the same regardless of what type of grass they have, but you actually need to mow it specifically for the type of grass you have. I currently have a lot of St. Augustine grass here in the front yard, some in the backyard, some on the side yard, where I'm slowly getting rid of all the Bermuda grass laying my St. Augustine grass sod. And I'm actually going to have a video where I show how to do that in the next few weeks, so make sure you subscribe to this channel and like this video. Very important. You're still here like the video. Okay, <laughs> so I mow these two very differently. So the Bermuda grass, you actually want to mow almost on the lowest setting. We don't need to get into that because this is not a video about that. But St. Augustine grass actually needs to be mowed on the highest setting that your mower will do. Mine is one through five, so I do it on a setting five, the highest one. You do not want to mow St. Augustine grass and do it all the way down. It will actually kill the grass. The, if you do it super low, like on a one, two, or even a three, I promise you the grass will look awful. It will be very sad, and it will kill it. You need to keep it nice and high. St. Augustine grass, as itself, actually sits higher off the ground. We have a lot. It gets really thick. The roots get really bundled, so everything kind of sits higher on the ground. Um, everything here, I know you can't see here, but it everything just bundles in really tight with all those roots. It's a much thicker grass. The roots are much thicker. Um, the stems for the runners, they all sit a lot higher on the grass. And so you need to make sure you don't cut those. You only want to cut the grass. Now, one other thing is that anytime you cut grass, it's going to put a little bit of shock to the system. Now, again, like I said previously, St. Augustine grass is more sensitive than other grasses. Um, so you don't want to just cut it willy-nilly whenever you feel like it. You need to plan these things. So last night was actually the, well, actually it would have been this morning, would have been my week where I would have been watered. It would have been this morning. So instead of watering this morning, what I did was I watered the grass really well last night so that the grass would be nice, full, happy, and ready to be mowed this morning. If I would not have done that, the grass would have been laying over, as I showed you. The grass would have just been overall sad. It wouldn't have been all cut as well because it's laying over. Um, and at the same time, it's already in a little bit of a shock because it needs water. So if I would have cut it then, you're just really putting the system into extra shock. It's like paranoid. It's upset. You don't want to do that. You want to water, you want to water the grass the night before you mow to ensure that it is healthy as possible. Okay, now speaking of mowing... And since I think we've discussed pretty much all of the issues that we have here, now it's time for me to get my mower out and give this a nice trim clean. Going to cut this all on five. Going to go to the Bermuda grass, cut it on three, cut my whole yard, make it look beautiful. Okay, let's be honest. You probably shouldn't mow in flip-flops. Don't repeat. Okay.
Now, I know all of you have definitely already liked this video and subscribed to this channel if you are still here. So I am not going to ask you to do that again. Please hit the notification bell to be notified of when I put videos out. <laughs> okay, last thing. Uh, the common, very common question um, and debate actually is grass clippings. So should you mulch them, which is what I'm doing with my yard and leave all the grass clippings down, or should you bag them and have a bag extension on your mower to collect all them and throw them away or compost them for your garden, etc. Now I used to compost them for my garden a lot. They actually work really well for that. It's a, a perfect thing to do. But what do I do here? I am actually mulching them on the ground. Now the answer depends on what type of grass you have. Also depends on your mowing habits. I'd really say mainly your mowing habits. So if you do not mow very often, if you wait for your grass to get knee high, if you wait for your grass to get too large and then you mulch like I am, what will happen is you have all of this grass, dead grass that's going to start and just going to cover your grass everywhere. It's going to smother your grass. It's going to kill your grass. It's not going to do anything beneficial. You definitely at that point in time just need to bag it, use it for compost, throw it away, whatever you want to do. But if you let your grass get too high, all you're doing is smothering it and killing it. Very bad idea. Now, if you cut your grass regularly, like I described in this video, like you should be doing, then mulching it is actually a better thing because you're cutting it so often that the grass is not going to be clumped everywhere. It's not going to be very much. It's not going to smother it. Instead, it's going to slowly break down, provide nitrogen for your grass, and make it greener, healthier, and happier. Then you don't got to put compost or other things on there as often. Okay, thank you all for watching this video. I very much do appreciate it. Have a great day, and I hope you come back to watch more videos. See ya. Ah, I need a weed eed. Ah, well, okay, fine. I guess I will.